Welcome to this new edition of Roundtable. Uh, my name is Ali Unsom, and today I'm going to uh, talk about the current political situation in the Gambia. And uh, here in the studio to talk about this is uh, my friend, the retired colonel from uh, the Gambia, Pam Udwain. He's a political activist and he lives with us here in Minnesota. Welcome to the show, Pam Udu. Thank you, Alu. Um, it's my honor to be here. And uh, via Skype uh, from Senegal, I have Kila Ais. He's a community activist, he's a rapper. Kila, welcome to the show. I think we do have a uh, technical issue there. Uh, Kila is going to join us later. And on the phone from New York, I have Seiku Mbalo. Seiku, welcome to the program. Seiku? Okay, Hello. thank you. And uh, my first question goes to Pamuru An. What is going on currently in the Gambia? Can you give us a brief synopsis of the current situation? Thank you, Malu. I think um, what's going on is a, um, a continuation of what has been going on. Uh, there are a lot of people who have done um, uh, activities, protest um, against the um, illegal and um, uh, very uh, retrogressive government um, in the Gambia led by Yaya Jammeh. Um, I think we can all remember um, the 2010, April 10th incident when the um, students came out um, to protest against some issues that were done against, uh, abused, in fact, for that matter, that were done against um, the youth mm -hmm. and, um, in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Another momentous milestone was uh, recently, um, uh, uh, December 30th, uh, also became um, a demonstration or representation of the dissent and, and, um, and unhappiness of the people of the Gambia to see how they could get, put democracy back um, in the country and take back their, their government. Um, another issue is in between these and before, there were a series of um, incidents demonstrating uh, patriotism, demonstrating dissent against uh, Yaya Jammeh's rule um, that took place um, uh, to demonstrate people's unhappiness, the demagogic um, tendencies of Yaya Jammeh, the inhumane treatments of uh, our people, uh, the abuse of justice, unfairness, and the totalitarian nature of how he administers um, um, the governance of our country. Um, I believe the present um, situation um, starting last week, Thursday, is the final straw, in my view, of demonstrating our final um, dissatisfaction that Jamme must go um, finally by the Gambian people. And this was done for the first time we have political leaders who came out to demonstrate their dissent, joined by other patriotic Gambians, and then um, having that spread out to the neighboring country and sisterly country, Senegal, it is a definite, a clear indication that uh, the time is up and finally the Gambian situation needs and requires an international focus, uh, a focus that requires ending this in the most peaceful way, uh, but necessary way so that Gambia and the sub-region can be in peace um, and prosperity, uh, respecting human rights and freedoms for the, for the rest of the time. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Pao Modru. Uh, Sehu, uh, if you are hearing me there, what is your take on the current uh, situation in the Gambia? Well, uh, Mr. Flo, thank you very much for, uh, for asking me that. Can you, can you get me? Yes, I can hear you. 
Okay. Um, thank you very much for asking me about uh, the current situation in the Gambia. Um, as your listeners can um, recall, um, there was um, a protest um, organized by Gambian youth, youth mm -hmm. who were demanding for uh, electoral reform in the country. Mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a result of that, um, three people were murdered by, by, by the Jame regime, and uh, that prompted um, opposition, United Democratic Party leader Usain Dabo also to call for a second protest to show the world, I mean, the type of rule, the type of dictatorship that is entrenched in the Gambia that has been going on from 1994, when I mean, on, on, on when when on 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 I mean on on on, on professional soldiers decided to seize the country, uh, uh, I mean I mean attacking it, democracy and rule of law in the Gambia from mm -hmm. 1994 up to date, Gambia has been experiencing the same violation of human rights, mm -hmm. the same disregard of rule of law, the same disrespect for women and children in the country. And you think a it's a culmination that, right now of the events that just happened on the 30th of, of, uh, of uh, December a year and a half ago? Or do you think that just people are just fed up and just saying enough is enough, we cannot keep on uh, living under these conditions? Well, what, what is happening right what is happening right now is the Gambian people are fed up and, and that um, they have seen this thing now as um, enough is enough. 22 years of terror um, is enough for them. And uh, now they have come out, they have started coming out to riches. And uh, I, I think this is a sign and symptom of ending the Jammeh government. Mm -hmm. I don't think Jammeh can survive this even before the 2000, uh, December 1st, uh, 2016 election. I mean, Mr. So, as Jammeh has made Gambian youth to, 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 to run out of the country in Exodus, they are all taking the bad way. There is no democracy. He is not accepting political dissent in the country. Opposition parties are not allowed to hold free and fair rallies in the country, the opposition parties have no access to the media, to the television and radio. I mean, I don't understand how Zambia, how, how people will allow now with this, in this 21st century, whereby the whole world is calling for democracy and rule of law and also time, time limit for presidency, they would allow President Jame to continue. They are not ready to accept that Jammeh has no regard for, 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 for his neighbors, that is Senegal. Zambia and Senegal are the same people in different nations. That is what we found. Jammeh has not created that. Nobody created that. It is created by God. The same people you find in Senegal are the same people who are in Zambia. But Jammeh has brought about division between Senegal and Gambia. He has been continuously punishing the people of the Gambia and people of Senegal. He's not punishing the people of the Senegalese government, but he's punishing the people of the, the people, the Senegambian people. They are not having free access to trade, which is a serious violation of the ECOWAS protocol. So therefore, Mr. So, enough is enough. He has murdered enough people that may think he came to power. And uh, with the recent incident of murdering solo standing of the United uh, Organizing Secretary of the United Democratic Party, Fatima Jawara, and Logoi Njai, I think enough is enough. People are not going to, co this thing, these protests are going to continue. And uh, also, Gambians are going to reach this thing. He has to part and go. This is, this is what everybody is holding on today. We don't think we will allow somebody to be continuing killing our people, our civilians. I don't think whether the United Nations, the ECOWAS, the OAU, European Union, will sit down and look at Jammeh 
killing civilians in the country, killing children and women, and they allow him to continue. This is, this is the situation we see. It's a challenge for the international community as well, that they work with Gambians to make sure that as soon as possible, we have a regime change. Thank you. Thank you, Sehu. Pamuru, from a very peaceful people, Gambia is one of the oldest democratic countries in Africa. Most of the ECOWAS countries now are democratic or at least have changed regimes. He is one single country, the Gambia. We have a dictator that has been in power for 22 years. Mm -hmm. How did we get to this situation? What happened in the Gambia for Gambia to be so pacified that people are not reacting? This is the most recent reaction that we've seen for a long time. What is your take on that? Thank you, Ali. I think that um, uh, Sehu, um, I'm extending greetings to you, my brother. Um, and thank, thank you, Pat. You have mentioned very key um, factors that are very relevant in our political discourse and the current situation in the Gambia. Aliu, this is a very relevant question. And uh, we are all searching how we found ourselves where we are today. I will just touch on a few. Um, in 94, I believe that um, there was a trend to call for change. But I don't think the people or us, we, the, the demand was a change to retrogress. I think we wanted, uh, there was a call for, to reduce the corruption and uh, other needs that the people had uh, encountered. Uh, so it coincided with the coup, and there was this, okay, wait and see attitude by most Gambians to give the coup, coup plotters uh, the benefit of the doubt. Because if you recall, the express aspirations and outline of uh, milestones that the junta presented uh, at the time was had impressed a lot of Gambians. Mm -hmm. um, but then the question was, will this be followed through? I remember uh, after the uh, meet the people and consultative uh, process, um, and there was this big meeting at the uh, stadium in Bacau. Mm -hmm. Um, that was when I believe the bottom fell through. When the pronouncement excluded uh, term limits and also excluded or included the junta seemingly as continuing, I believe most Gambians started being despondent uh, about or having questions relating to whether what they thought these people represent as saviors would be fulfilled. And the rest of the situation um, was no. They failed the Gambian people. Um, they failed the government. Um, um, Jamme continued to um, attrition even within the junta. Um, and at the end, it was only him left. Um, then he started inserting um, tools and mechanisms and institutions that further controlled um, the Gambian people. Um, from psychophancy to militarization of the country, uh, those, these two extremes were used. Uh, most of his infant orientation was received um, through Libyan, Libya, Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. um, he adopted most of the Gaddafi's approach or success story, so-called, uh, adopting the Green Book. That is one of the reasons why you see uh, the coloring in the official, the party 
APRC and uh, even his offices, most of his furniture is colored green. So he, he was taken by that and he had a close relationship with, with, um, with Gaddafi, um, prompted by uh, Baba Job, one of the uh, very prominent people whom he killed later on. Um, he was the, if I could say, the initiator and originator of this uh, rapprochement with, with Gaddafi during that period. Then um, he started creating um, um, people, groups within the system that directly um, um, abuse if he doesn't get his way, uh, starting from, uh, in fact, before then was uh, going back to Kuro Sise, who the former minister who was butchered and burnt alive. Um, and then you have uh, Uncle Deda Haidara, uh, the editor um, uh, of a prominent newspaper, um, killed in daybreak. So he started using extrajudiciary measures to silence his critics. And that just continued on and on. And he became um, a master of that, seeing that as the only tool to address dissent uh, from, from other Gambians. And as a matter of fact, all the military or security institutions were torn into um, um, means of uh, abuse and subjecting our people to, to harassment, killings. Um, he had and built a whole machinery for, for this. And we had evidence from people who came out from the regime who were participants or witness um, these heinous atrocities that were carried out by Jamme. Uh, you don't have to do anything wrong for him to uh, sentence you to death and carry it out uh, um, uh, during that period. And most importantly, um, he had exercised this even within people he worked for or he worked with. He used people to, to, to do harm on our people and then come around and subject you yourself to that same harm or even kill you. Um, so, it, and it worked for him. Um, and he continued. So that instilled, that terror, I would classify it, he created terror at every level of the, of the Gambian, um, um, in Gambian community, Gambian institutions, and, and divided and ruled. Ali, I will tell you this. It is official that no soldier can visit another soldier. You cannot even go to his naming ceremony. It's sanctioned. It is a law. It's a, it's a process. It's a procedure. And he, you, he did that even within the, 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 the civilian community. And then there is this perception of, oh, is Ali telling on me? Is Ali an informer? So he created this atmosphere of fear and suspicion within the people, I believe that is one of the biggest things, instruments he used. Um, and history has confirmed that uh, from terror regimes in the past, how they prevailed, how they functioned, how they came about um, leaving their way of life so long and people looking like they don't want to do anything about it. I believe that means of control subjected Gambians uh, to a total um, control, even their personal lives. And this includes what my brother Seiko was talking about. Uh, even the radio stations, uh, anyone who was critical towards him, you either born you alive, uh, the independent newspaper was born down. Uh, the journalists were harassed. They have to run for their lives. Um, and newspapers were closed. 
uh, editors were uh, arrested, so killed. So it, it is a total clamp down that he did over the last 20 years and at the end um, had total control over the lives of the Gambians. And I believe this also resulted in the secondary uh, effect of Gambians moving outside. There are so many. The estimate is about uh, 250 to 500,000 Gambians leaving Gambia uh, since the coup. And neighboring Senegal is the first step out. And um, you find a substantial number of Gambians in, 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 in Senegal. Um, Gambia is one of the smallest countries in, in Africa the smallest population in Africa, but we have the highest ratio in the backdoor uh, 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 immigration process. Yes, yeah. So that yeah. just shows you and reflects the mayhem and the, and, the, and the lack of tolerance that our young people can't live by or live through, and most of them declare it is better to even die at sea than to stay in the, country in the country because they are living in total abject poverty with no hope in line for them to do. So that is really, in brief, the, there is a lot more uh, explanation to why it is what it is and how it is what it is. One last thing. He has torn the professional disciplined Gambian army into an army of for himself. And the army is divided into the one group that protects him and everybody else who is just there. And the one group that protects him is the group that does most of these harassment, killings, and abuse. And they are subject to a lot of privileges as a result and he handpicked them um, for whatever conditions he chooses and give them monies and other perks so that um, they will feel special and, and controlled by him. Even within this group, they, are, they will tell you that he will tell one against the other. And all is revolving around his personality, his way of doing it. So he's been very effective um, in, in, in managing, controlling, and subjecting Gambians to uh, perpetual harassment and, and, and abuse for this period of time. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Pamudu. Uh, Sehu, Pamudu touched a lot of points. And one of the points that got my attention is the Stalinian kind of ruling that is right now in the Gambia, because we don't see these kind of regimes anymore since Pinochet or uh, you know, people that are in disappearance now. We don't see these kind of rulers anymore. How is it that in 2016, we still are allowing this kind of situation in the Gambia? Well, Jeff, Ali, well, Ali, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good question. What happened is, the reason why we are having this type of regime in the Gambia is because they have managed and succeeded in intimidating the Gambian community. When they seize power, my brother Pamodu has just elaborated on that. I mean, this poor lieutenant, arrogant and greedy lieutenant that Aya Jame, Yankubature, Tade Buhaidra, and Edward Singati decided to seize the power mm -hmm. and form a ruling council on, on a Friday, July 22nd, 1994. Mm -hmm. How were they able to stay at that time? It is true that at that material time, Gambians were a little bit fed up with the PPP because of what was going on. So these young lieutenants since that opportunity, when they overthrow the government, they pro promised the Gambians they are going to, they are going to rule with a difference. That 
there will be a ta presidential term limit. Nobody will stay in power forever. They will decentralize a lot of the things that we are centered in the capital Banjul, like coming to apply for passport, border issues, I mean, agriculture ministry, so on and so forth. And they, through that way, they managed to convince the Gambians that now things are, things are going to be different from what the PPP government was offering. What that did improve, I mean, um, uh, I mean the right thing that they were, they were intending to do. When they seized power, first what they did was they assassinated Usman Koro Sise, who was the finance minister, after demanding huge sum of money from the treasury. And Usman Koro Sise, being a civilian, he was reluctant to offer them that amount. So they, they, they assassinated, they burned him in his Methodist bench in Jambul. That was the first intimidation, the first wake-up call, wake call for Gambian. Gambian is Gambians should have known that these people have nothing to offer. They are here to rule the Gambia, to loot the treasury, and then stay in hang on to power forever. But people kept quiet. That followed with the, with, with the arresting of other political opponents, human rights activists, union leaders. They went on crack. crack started cracking down those type of those type of people who are heading organizations. They banned political parties, they banned the constitution. The country was ruled by decrees. And during all these periods, Mr. Ali, they were, this was just an effort for them to come into power to change turn their court, military court, into a, into a, in, into civilians. They intimidated every Gambian. There was the pressure mounting from the international community that the country must be returned into a, into, into a democratic rule. They yeah. said they were, going to, they, were, they were ready to do that, but they can only finish their job within four years. Gambian people started voicing out their this, 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 this approval for that. And the international community came to their response. They said they want the Gambian people to be asked, to be given the opportunity to speak what type of term, what type of rule do they want. The Gambians said they want democracy and rule of law. Therefore, they urge the military to reduce the, 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 I mean the four years to two years. So, Gambia and his gang I mean, I mean, it was I mean, um, Yanko Baturi and uh, Sadi Buhaydra were asked to organize elections within the shortest time, and uh, they, they, it was approved by a national consultative committee. When that happened, we headed for elections in September 2000 and, uh, 1996. They, 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 they didn't, they didn't live up to expectation, up to their promises, because they said they are not politicians, they are not going to contest elections. But, but guess what? Yaya Jammeh engaged on a campaign for the Gambian people to, 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 to call on him to contest elections, that they need him. Despite, despite the fact he has promised that he is not a politician, he is not going to contest, but he engaged some people, like Baba Joe, some elders, community elders, mm -hmm. Khalifa Sano of Brookwood, mm -hmm. other imams in the country, he gave them money to go throughout the country and call for Jammeh's candidate as a presidential candidate in the 1996 presidential election. He succeeded mm -hmm. in organizing that September ele election and he offered, him, uh, offered himself as a candidate against the opposition, against the majority of Gambians, I can say. Okay. Uh, and and then uh, people will be, be headed to elections. Mm -hmm. During the election campaign, Mr. Ali, a lot of people, the United Democratic Party lose a lot of people.
people like Sajo Kunja Chani, women. So many mm -hmm. people from Big Tama. Mm -hmm. We are beating Lamin Wajwara. We are beating people we are adopted overnight, Singul mm -hmm. Nati and others. They went on that. Zambian would have wake up from that moment and come into the street. But they didn't do that. They said, let's give them an opportunity. We think mm -hmm. they would do better. Not only that, that was the time when President Jamme got money from the Taiwanese going to 200 and almost, two, almost, almost 200 and something million from the Taiwanese. And he looked at that money. He sent Ibu Jalo to save the money for him in the tourist, in the tourist bank. Until That's good, Jehu. And uh, Jalo has taken it. Uh, I mean, Jamme has not brought back that money. That money is with President Jamme. Despite mm -hmm. the fact that the money was taken from Ibu Jalo, Ibu Jalo, women, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, disagree that the money is not for him. He was sent by Jamme. And I think today, majority of Gambians agree that the money was for Jamme. Jamme authorized the transfer of that fund to study to his bank. Is that not corruption? So what is the essence? Then therefore, Gambians, we saw this thing as, what is the essence then overthrowing the, uh, the PPP government for corruption if this thing is happening? During the PPP government, there was no incident whereby one t in, in one time a go the, the government would transfer, would, speak, would embezzle 200 and something million. What it happened during the AFCRC government. Therefore, yeah. we see no reason why we should have accepted this this, this, this greedy and arrogant soldiers to come and rule the country, to, to stay in power. To stay in power. No, the, so that's the a good point. <coughs> the part that I, uh, I'm still puzzled is we had rulers that were harsher than this. Uh, we had Blaise Compaore of the Burkina Faso. And <coughs> the people of Burkina Faso have been able to uh, rise and say no. There are two countries right now in West Africa that we still see this kind of regimes. It's Togo and it's currently Gambia. And the ECOWAS was about to pass a ruling that was putting a term limit in terms of governance. And because of two countries, <coughs> this was rejected. It was Togo and the Gambia. What hold do these people have on ECOWAS? that we cannot have internal pressure? Or what is it that people are scared of that even a country like Senegal does not want to confront Yaya Jame? What is your take on that, uh, Pamuru? Uh, thank you, Ali. <coughs> I think um, I'll just uh, refer to Burkina Faso a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, remember, Blessed came in, um, and um, he was there almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, God forbid, that's not what we want. Um, we would like to make sure that Jamme doesn't um, last the rest of this year. Mm -hmm. um, but as we said, um, the ECOWAS have limitations. And I believe that the next generation of African leadership, uh, young people, uh, the challenge is how do we revitalize some of these protocols that are in itself hindrance to the progress not only of respective countries but the progress political progress of of the entire west africa so um i had i had studied uh, this particular uh, in, in, in situation and and my take is that um the 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 the, the 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 agreement for total concession that everybody have to agree before something is ascended to i think is a huge limitation and even going beyond that uh, that is one of the handicaps of the au african union at the moment um, so west africa really must set the t stone to if we want true democracy uh, our protocols have to reflect 
um, the interests of the people of West Africa, not leaders. So far, it is very protective of leaders. Uh, we have seen the recent incident um, um, of demonstration. Even though the ECOWAS presented a statement, but it is still limiting in its impact to what Jemme is doing um, and affecting the Gambian people. So I believe that um, um, the, the protocols must be reviewed, the protocols must be reset. Uh, we must have the political will to change that. And I believe the new breed of, of politicians like in, um, in Nigeria, in Benin, the president who voluntarily left power, it's very encouraging. The situation in Senegal, um, the militancy of the citizenry, um, that is to me the bastion of democracy. Democracy is not only displaying um, milestones, but between milestone is substance. And what's that substance to me is the people. The will of the people must prevail and transcend anybody. And yet, we only see that in isolated countries, it has not taken hold in all of West Africa. And I believe as soon as it does, we will see outcomes that are demands of the people, irrespective of who is there. We could, the people can kick you out legally when you do something wrong. And the mechanism should be there to give them that access, just like recalling a president or recalling a minister or recalling a commissioner. Um, we don't have to wait for a term to expire for those things to happen. So the instruments that uphold our democratic process must be made sure they reflect the will of the people, not just at election time, but all the time. And I think this is what is missing, not only in some of these countries, but is missing seriously in ECOWAS. Um, and I think this is what is required. Uh, we must do all we can um, to, to make sure that takes place. I believe ECOWAS should recognize the peril that Gambians have been through. Um, the human rights abuses is known by everybody. Uh, human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, AU, ECOWAS, regional organization. Uh, even the US government sometimes throw in a statement or two. Um, the patron of statements is the EU. The EU have been very consistent in their opposition and con con you know, condemnation of Yahya Jammeh. But still, verbal and theoretical paper statements does not make a change. We are demanding as Gambians an action-oriented change so that we put to rest Gambi uh, Yahya Jammeh's regime once and for all. Everybody knows what is wrong. Everybody knows uh, what this guy is doing from recent issues relating to cocaine over two billion dollars street value, uh, weapon smuggling to Casamas. Senegalese government knew that. Uh, Senegalese government uh, knew the economic deprivation they were doing against uh, 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 Senegal. They knew Jammeh's role in, in bustering the, um, the, 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 the Casamas rebels. So the question now is, why are we playing safe with a situation that you know will never change? It's consistent. It has been consistent. And the Senegalese government, ECOWAS, AU, EU, the United States government have been playing safe. The question is, why? Why do they want Yaya Jamme in power when Yaya Jamme is undermining every principle on human rights, on political dispensation, on freedoms of expression, of economic freedoms, 
Every protocol has been undermined and we still have people shying away from the atrocities of what Jaya Jami is doing. I'm demanding as a Gambian, I'm demanding as a political activist, I'm demanding as a U.S. citizen to the, uh, the United States government, why are we keeping Yaya Jamme in power still after all these atrocities he is doing? So they need to call. It's not only the Gambian people rising up and doing things. We have geographical limitations. Uh, and we have already, myself and Seiko, uh, elucidated some of the limitations and the conditions that Jamme over the years have created to condition our people in this, in this pocket of control that he has existing. So the international community have a burden and a responsibility to act to end this dictatorial and terroristic government. It is we should all be in arms. It's not only the Gambia's responsibility. Senegal should act. Uh, ECOWAS should act. And, and those of us who are out here as Gambians and Gambians activists wanting to see power return back to our people, we are also trying our best. But we can do it alone. Those powers necessary must act and end this demagogic government once and for all. And it's not just for Gambia. It is for West Africa. It is for Senegal, for God's sake. What is happening now? This monster who has have no respect for any protocols can just sit back at his palace and say, close the borders. He has done that the last 10 years for over four times. And what will Senegal do? Uh, I think yeah, oh, our brother, you are our brother. Uh, they will send Obasanjo again to, to talk about it. And then what happens again? Give him two years. He, he, he needs money or wants to do something else. And it's the same thing again. How can any government, how can any international institution, how can any um, uh, uh, West African uh, human rights government institution or anybody who stands for rights and, and, and freedoms support or even distance themselves, shy away from their responsibility to s stop this nonsense once and for all. Thank you, Ari. Thank you, Pamodo. You raised a couple of very, very good points, and those are questions that I've always wondered, is what are the forces that are behind this guy? Because as we say in Wolof, and I will translate that. If you wake up, if a child wakes up in the middle of a house and starts insulting others, there, is, there are forces behind him to allow him to do that. What are the forces that you think are behind Yahya Jame? Like you stated, the EU has stated clearly that they do not support this regime. And unfortunately, we have seen very timid reaction from the United States. Is Yaya Jame, to openly say it, is he a U.S. asset? And if so, what is the role that is playing for them in this region right now? You mentioned drugs, you mentioned arms. And we've known from the history, knowing the CIA history in other parts of the world, that that has been a tactical measure and stuff that they have done into some parts of the world. Is Yaya Jame a CIA asset? If that's the case, we have to out him and we have to state whatever the forces that are behind Yaya Jame today, that it is unacceptable in 2016, that we live into a brutal regime that keeps killing our sons and daughters in Africa today. Yes, our resources, you are taking it away, but it is not acceptable today that we are brutalized on our land. But if he's an asset, whatever forces that are behind him have to let him go because we're not going to accept it. What is your take on this, Pamudwa? Uh, thank you, Alu. I think um, this, is the, 
This is the biggest question. I am not the originator of this question. Several U.S. like uh, 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 journalists, prominent international journalists, have raised this question. Um, why is with all the atrocities Jamme is doing, with all the calls for democratization in other countries by the U.S. government, sending troops, sending arms, U.S. citizens being killed, sending resources. Uh, why is it still, why are we still shying away from the burden, the, 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 the terroristic nature? There is no bigger terrorist, gentlemen, than Yaya Jamme in West Africa. And we have seen the emergence and resurgence of, 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 of the Islamists in, in West Africa. Um, and we're leaving the, the situation to prevail. And he's an opportunistic leader. And he has done, I have to give him credit, where it's due, even though it's evil. Uh, he's opportunistic and he knows when to do what. That, is, that has been one of the underestimation by many including the, the Senegalese government, playing it safe with him up to this day. Going back to the question, what, does, what interest does the U.S. have with Yaya Yame? I don't know. But when you put the evidence together, it shows you that it seems like they have something that he is holding on for them on their behalf. And it baffles every democratically minded, oriented citizenry, including um, um, US citizens. It is like, what does the, the, the Declaration of Independence say? We have to touch on that, that you as American citizen have a right to stand up, to paraphrase, and fight any dictatorial tendency from our leaders here in the U.S. It's in the Declaration of Independence. We must not allow. We can raise up in arms and fight any terror, uh, any, any leader with, 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 with those type of tendencies. What happened in the 30th of, of, of 2015, 2014, is a typical example. Yes, there are laws. We are a country of laws in this country. But then a country of laws has contradicted itself where America's interests prevail. So which is which? Where are we talking about? What has Jammed done for or with the United States to warrant such a perpetual terror and everybody looking the other way. At this point in the game, my country's life and livelihood, the Africa's region's progress for me personally is worth beyond who I am today. If this is my only contribution for the betterment so that other people can take it up, and fly with it and fight for it, then I will say bravo. Uh, because we all need to say or do what we need to do when we need to do it. And it is time to call on the US to, to, to book, to, 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 to state their, themselves, to come clear, to come clean, to help us floss this man out once and for all. Because enough is enough, Ali. I agree. Sehu, can you piggyback on that question in terms of uh, the U.S. involvement in the Gambia right now, and what is your position on that question? Hello, Sehu? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean yes. Um, like my um, brother and the comrade um, Pamudu has just alluded, mm -hmm. I think it's a, right now, it is al very alarming that people, 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 uh, people, people are becoming very concerned. I mean, the reason behind why the United States 
if not taking drastic action or measures against the Jammeh government. With all the human rights violations that Jammeh has been committing, with all the drug dealing that Jammeh has been committing, it has been exposed, with all the international protocol convention violations that Jammeh has been committing, the United States seems to be very lenient with him. And I think me, as a U.S. citizen, and uh, there are many U.S. citizens who are Gambian, and Gambian United States citizens residing here in the United States, are very concerned. And uh, we are very soon we will be coming up with a petition to the U.S. government to, to, to cast our, 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 our doubt. I mean, the reason why the United States is not really taking a drastic action on a brutal ruler like Jammy. Because it's true, they have come up, when this thing happened, they have come up with statements condemning the action. But we are saying that is not enough. What we expect from the United States today is to definitely to work with the, with the civilian community that there are ample evidence that the Gambian civilians are fed up, they are tired with the Jammeh rule. Therefore, if that is the cause, and going by the democratic principle, I think the voices of the people, of the population, speak better. Not the regime, not one party, a dictator sitting out there working against the people. It is legitimate for the United States government to call on Jammy to step down and support what the Jammyan people are calling for today. And we expect, with this episode going on right now with the Jammy government, with this problem happening right now with the Jammy government, between him and the Gambian people, we expect the United States government to come boldly and clearly and tell the Jammy government that enough is enough. We don't expect, we don't think whether it would be for the interest of the Gambian people, for the interest of your neighbors, for the interest of the rule of law, human rights, and democracy, for you to contest the 2016 election. Time is enough for you to leave. You can organize a free and fair election to order candidates inside the country, but you would not be allowed to present yourself as a candidate. Mr. Aliu, I think this question now is right there, it's out there. My colleague, my comrade, my brother, Mr. Parmodu has, has just said this thing, and I think many people are also saying the same thing. They want the U.S. government to check all the actions to make sure that the Gambian people are liberated, the Gambian people are free, they have democracy and rule of law in the country. Look at what is happening in Congo. Jammeh and, and the Congolese president, they are the same. They are the only, you said it here, you said it earlier, that they are the only two African presidents who are not willing to support the term limit. And what is stopping the Black World and, and, and the European Union? How can two people hold the whole continent hostage, stopping them from implementing what is right? Majority carries the vote in democracy. If majority of African presidents have supported the term limit, why should two people stop them from implementing? I don't understand the reason for the rationale behind it. So Those are all is, issues uh, within yeah. our ECOWAS that we would most probably have to deal with. But at this point, is within Gambia itself, uh, how can the political parties still keep the momentum? Uh, because we have a momentum right now uh, to, to send a signal around the world to state all the partners from the EU to the ECOWAS partners to the U.S. government or other entities that are interacting with us that this regime needs to go 
and what is an alternative plausible situation that can take place in the Gambia right now where people are not individual parties just fighting for their interests right now, but people coming together and sitting down at the table and saying, if this regime goes, this is an alternative policy that can take place. What is your take on that uh, right now? Say, who as a, you know, we're getting to the end of the show right now. Uh, what is your take on that as a political well, activist inside the Gambia? Well, right now, our, our message, I mean, Ali, for the people in the Gambia, the pol both the politicians and also the activists in the Gambia, is for them to come together. Come together and speak one voice. That is, they are not contesting any election with President Jammeh because it's not going to be, it's going to be nice, it's, it's neither going to be free nor fair. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Jammeh is not, they are not contesting election, they are not going to, election, forget about democracy in the country if Jammeh is going to be presented as a candidate. And also, they call for him to step down. Mm -hmm. This is what we are trying. We have been trying, mobilize, we have been talking to them. We have been working with some of them. And this is, this is, this, this is, this, 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 this is the only solution for the country to be liberated. Mm -hmm. They have to come together, all the op opposition, pa party leaders, and also the activists, and tell the world that the Gambia is not moving any, for any, any, any forward with Gambia as, as the head of state. We are ready to participate. They are ready to participate in elections. They are ready to participate in democracy in the absence of Jammeh. But in the presence of Jammeh as a leader, they are not going forward because there will never be no free or fair elections in the Gambia. Just like what the, the, the Senegalese Transportation, Tra Transportation Union said, they are not ready to do business with the Jammeh government because he is not reliable and respectful to the, to, to, to the accord. And, and, and everybody now respect them. They are not using the Gambia transit, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean crossing, because of Gambia has violated the, the Equals Protocol for so many times. Mm -hmm. So if Gambian, if Senegalese people transport, so this is not even the government. This statement came from the Senegalese who are who are who have dignity, who have respect for themselves. They said enough is enough. They rather use the Kambakunda route. Than going through 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 through, through, through the Bamatien, Bamatien Daily send up a crossing whereby any minute something unexpected can come. Jammeh can cross the border, can cross the ferry. So if Senegalese people can do that, transport transportation union can do that. What is stopping Gambian opposition and activists from coming with a concrete foundation of solution to this problem by telling Jammeh we are not going election. He has to step down because he's not reliable. The pro right now, recently, they have just signed again, uh, I mean, the MOU that was implemented earlier in mm -hmm. 2006 with General Abdul Salam, of, 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 who was a special envoy of the Commonwealth. Why should they do that while right now there are many opposition leaders who are in jail? Is it that they have no advisors? Is it that they are not, they, they don't know what to do, they are completely lost of, 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 of the situation? This is the message. Jammeh, right now, the slogan should be Jammeh must go. That's the, that's the only solution for the Gambia. That's the only solution for the interest of, for, for the world community. I think the message is very clear. That is, the, the opposition in the country has to make sure that what people are supporting, what the Senegalese, Senegalese people, look at what happened, look at the demonstration in Senegal. Look at the number of people that came out in the, in, 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 in the, Senegal, in the Senegalese capital. They are very sympathetic to the civilians. They are very sympathetic to their brothers and sisters in the Gambia, who are running out of the country on a daily basis for their lives. They are, I mean, I mean, they are protected in Senegal. Thank you to the Senegalese. We are thanking the Senegalese government. No, we should be thank you. There is no Senegal or there is no Gambia. If your brother is uh, in pain, you're in pain. If your sister is in pain, you're in pain. Uh, what we have to remember right now is uh, our well-being as a people is all tied in. Uh, like you well said, uh, it's time right now to say that, you know, we cannot keep on doing the same thing and expect a different result. Uh, 
uh, Yaya Jame has not been a good broker. I think uh, there is not going to be a fair election uh, and just election. Uh, I think the pressure should be on right now that Yaya Jame cannot be back onto any election list. What is your take on that as a conclusion here, uh, Pa Mudwan? I think <laughs> the, the words should be clear. I 100% back my, my brother Sefu on this. How can you even talk about election on someone who has consistently abused, harmed, killed their own people? Jamme, as a leader, has already undermined himself. He has delegitimized himself as the leader of the Gambian people by the very, very act he is doing. He is supposed to protect and preserve the Gambian people. He is not doing that. He is harming and abusing and limiting the Gambian people. So he must step down. He must go. And then we have an interim government that prepares for elections end of the year. This should happen right now. And the, my Senegalese brothers and sisters, we commend them for the bravery and allying with us on this. Yes, they should feel our pain. Yes, they came out later than expected, but the momentum is there. I think the timing is, 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 is good, but the government, the life, uh, uh, my brother Machisal should garner courage to do the, do make this call. Um, it is not always that the West are with you, but when the outcome is right, they will be with you. Uh, this is a call. Uh, in fact, I told someone that we have arrived at a point where the pain and tragedy is now equal to Senegalese people and government right like it is to the Gambian people. We've been subject to this mayhem, to this terror for all these years. And it has always been looked at differently by some people, managing and balancing it politically. No, we must look at it how it should be looked at, and that is the impact it's done. Anytime you subsist, put aside a problem, what have history told us? It will always become a bigger problem. We have, we have sighed away, we have managed it, it is time to cut this problem away and throw it out. And that is what the people have demanded last week in the Gambia. That is what, why our political leaders have stood in knowing that their lives are at threat, it, uh, in danger. They still took a bold step in representing the dissent and the unhappiness of the Gambian people. I believe that that is enough representation of our discontentment of our fi finality in the outcome of this situation, that it is enough, and Senegal, America, the West, the Gambian people, everybody must come out, everybody must do their best so that we can end this regime once and for all. Thank you, Pamuru. Uh, thank you, Usehu. Uh, your last word, Sehu, on this show before we uh, say goodbye. Well, Ali, I mean, I, am, I thank you very much for giving us the opportunity, I mean, to come here and sit with, I mean, um, the Gamb both the Senegambian, Senegal and Gambian people and the world community, I can say. I think my last message is, like my comrade brother said, uh, Mr. Pamudu, and we owe Matisal, President Matisal, to take a bold step with the Gambian people. Let him support the Gambian civilians. The Gambian people are suffering. Look at what happened between Uganda, um, Idi Amin, and the Tanzania. Yeah. It's just a similar thing that triggered the Tanzanian to enter into Uganda. Mm -hmm. And Idi Amin was over to support them and overthrow Idi Amin. So I think it's the same thing here. I mean, Mati Sal should know that he is working with the international community. He is working with the Gambian people. Gambia is killing Gambians. Gambia is torturing Gambians. Not only Gambians. If you can recall, 
44 West, Af 44 West African immigrants were murdered in Gambia, including Senegalese people, Ghanians, Africans. So now, if we are talking about about Gambia being a sovereignty country, where is the sovereignty here when Jamaica will not respect other countries? When Jamaica will not respect the civilian community in the Gambia? So therefore, Matisal should work with Gambian. Gambian have army, the whole army, civil army who, are, who have respect for themselves, who have dignity, like my brother Pamodu and have this, they, have, they are out of the country. They are living in exile because they cannot stand and see the disgrace that the people, so-called army man turned civilian is destroying the country. I think this is the message. Thank you very much, Ali. Thank you, Sehu. And your last word, Pamodu. Um, thank you very much, Aleu, and your, your colleagues for giving us this unique opportunity to discuss and talk about and present uh, our opposition as Gambians uh, to our brothers and sisters in Senegal, uh, to the United States government and concerned uh, actors in this country, um, to the EU and every one who will listen and, and, and view this, this, this discourse um, that the Gambia, it's enough, it's enough. Uh, the Gambian people have come to a point that uh, uh, Jamme is not only a nemesis to the Gambian people, but it is a total dis, 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 disarrangement to the Senegalese. Can you imagine the amount of safer billions that has been lost over the last two few months as a result of this of this of this nonsense closer, border closure he exercised. Can you imagine the, the disruption of livelihoods, the impact it has, the broad impact it has to those Senegalese and Gambians? Um, the economic impact is alone is just mind boggling. We have to put this in another session maybe with people who are more versed in the economic dispensation of this situation to, to, to at least estimate the loss it is doing, the harm it is doing to our people. How can you hang on somebody who is continuously disparaging you, undermining you, and the whole country is in total uh, retrogression, a continuous economically, politically, human rights-wise, it's not just acceptable. It is time that we all take action. It is time that the, it is safe, let me put it that way. Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter has given Senegal the right now because of what's happening. If they can to walk in and move him out, I'm not even saying they're under control. And that's just one reason. They, they, are, they have legitimate legal international reasons to step into Gambia and stop that regime and give the people their right and their privilege to ask the people to survive and, and, and leave. And because that has direct impact to Senegalese sovereignty. Senegalese sovereignty is questioned by Jammes uh, uh, actions. That is why I question why the Senegalese government is still thinking about it talking about it, strategizing about it. And whatever they do, they should make sure they do it in consultation with the right Gambian people who represent the, 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 the very mindset and expectation of the Gambians. Because the next step, the next transition is, is, can be challenging, will be challenging, because we are at a point where the whole fabric of institutions have been undermined for a very long time in the Gambia. Ethics, morality, rule of law have all been undermined continuously for the last 20 years. So it is not going to be easy, but it can be done. We can do it with help from our friends and neighbors with the right set of Gambians to represent the, 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 the Gambian people. Thank you very much, Aleo. This was a privilege. Um, have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pamodu. As usual, you are equal to yourself. And thank you to uh, Sehumbalo from New York.
Uh, this was another round table. We will be bringing this topic often these coming days. Uh, we'll be talking about the Gambian situation and the follow up on the situation on the ground as it progresses. Uh, having said that, uh, to the next edition of uh, round table, I'll see you guys next week. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Alex. All right, thank, thank you. you.